So this um, this video you're making this week, Pasky, it's about our roll and tip painting job on Marul. That's right. Yes, we opted to paint our entire boat by hand, even though we probably could have sprayed it, but we decided not to spray it. And why was that? There was a couple of reasons. Um, so part of it, um, we just we just figured that rolling and tipping just it doesn't put you know, like mists of paint into the, um, the air and there's a lot less materials used in the masking of it. Um, and that's that's purely a personal thing. You know? Yeah. Like, um, don't, don't take this to be any sort of preachy thing, <laughs> all right? Um, but another big consideration was we wanted a paint job that we can repair ourselves sometime in the future. Exactly, exactly. You can't do that with a spray job and if anyone has tried to repair a spray job, you'll notice that it leaves quite a patch where you do the repair. Yeah, it's really you obvious. You don't get the same finish with a brush spray on top of brush on top of a spray job. Yep. Um, so we can repair it and also with roll and tipping um, it gives sort of a satin finish. It, it's a nice finish. We're really happy with it but it gives sort of a satin finish instead of high gloss and what that means is just to the casual observer or us coming back in the dinghy or something like that we won't see all the little bumps and, and you know imperfections in the hull that just happen with um, various owners, us, um, and a boat being 50 years old. Right. Like we saw other boats that have been sprayed, like, and um, some In of the better condition than ours, but. Some of the guys here do an amazing spray job, like really great. And, but afterwards you could see every little waver in the hull. Yeah. And, and we didn't want that because we knew that we had lots of waves in the hull. The last thing that we wanted to do was to spend untold hours you know, with a big flexible, flexible torture board making that hull fair. Yeah. Um, that is just not who we are. Yeah. <laughs> so, so rolling and tipping um, did that for us. So yeah. um, in summary, I guess we had a bit of an environmental consideration. Yeah. We didn't want to use all that single use plastic. And yeah. it, it really does like, we, we were a bit concerned about the amount of vapor that goes into the air um, and just blows That's away right. to end up somewhere. Yeah. So that was a consideration for us. We wanted to be able to repair it in the future and Definitely. for it to disappear. Yep. Um, and we didn't want a high gloss finish. And we didn't want a high gloss finish. The paint that we were using was Jotun Hardtop Ultra and it's high gloss. And we'd seen it sprayed on other boats and it's very, very shiny when it's sprayed. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, you know another one that's a bit of an intangible? But when we were first looking at spraying, we were looking at um, saving time. Right. Okay, and that, that doesn't apply to everyone, um, but for us it was yeah saving time. But then also another point of, <clears throat> excuse me, having a go at rolling and tipping again is I knew I was rubbish at it, okay, from previous attempts. That we both were. <laughs> that we both were, and I wanted to sort of master that skill because once you've done it, then you've got it forever sort of thing, you know? Yeah, and, I think so. you know, like spraying equipment is not always available. Um, and it's expensive, whereas with roll and tip, once you've got that skill under your belt, a roll and a paintbrush is not that expensive. You don't need a spray booth and the, the prep for it, the amount of masking and stuff like that is way, way less. So I, th I think that's why we, you know, we pushed forward with it and I'm really happy that we did. Yep, so without further ado, <laughs> we had a big pause. No, it doesn't matter, we can just leave it like that yeah, and roll the, roll the video. I'm really happy that we did. Yeah. So today is nice weather. We've spent the last hour prepping the top sides of the hull and we are going to put the first coat of paint on. <laughs> Troy does not like painting and Troy gets very grumpy when we paint and he also gets really frustrated with the finish because all these paints, they, you have to give them some time to let them dry flat and so he finds it very frustrating. So I've said to him today, <laughs> I've asked him today to keep his cool. Are you going to solemnly swear that you're not going to get mad? No way, man. I'm going to lose it. About 15 minutes into it. You're going to keep your cool keep while we paint way. because it's not good for my nerves. Just for you. <laughs> We're not putting a primer on the top sides because when you look at the data sheet for this paint, yep. it says that as long as you key it up to um, 180, and we've keyed it to 120, mm it will accept itself again, so to recoat. Okay, and the, we've got the same paint, we're putting the same paint on again. We're using the same paint, so the, the, the data sheet, because you could ask anyone here around the boatyard, they'll be like, oh, and they'll give you 15 different answers. Answers. So we always go directly to the manufacturer. Yep. Everyone around here at the moment is using uh, Waddle P400. Is that, is that right? Something like that, or P50, I don't know, whatever. Whatever, they're using a, a Waddle brand paint. 
Um, but we're just going to stay with the Jotun because I know it works. Um, and I've been using it for a while and it's just the same paint that we've already got and it's compatible with itself. It's like infinite overcoat as long as you keep it. So we painted the boat this morning. You saw us rolling and tipping. We did like, we moved really fast. I think we like, we should have done a really good job, but it turns out that the guy at the paint shop in Hobart actually sold us the wrong thinner. So all of our top sides that we spent weeks fairing and making sure that they look nice, the top sides being the part above the waterline of the outside of the hull. It's all like orange peely and there's runs and it just looks terrible when I was trying to tip it off the paint was drying so the thinner that they gave us was actually a thinner that you put in the paint if you want to use it for spray application so it's actually an accelerant like a super speed accelerant we just got back to the boat we went had to go back into Hobart to get the right thing it's from the paint shop guy this is the only place where you can buy the Jotun paint and the guy that sold it to us hasn't even read the material data sheet for it and doesn't know what thin is to mix with it to paint on the boat so I'm like almost feel like crying Troy is so angry and we've tried to sand it but it's not dry enough yet so we don't know what to do we we're hoping like we're running out of time and we're hoping to paint it tomorrow um, yeah to like sand it back sand all this orange peel back so that we could get the boat nice and fair maybe with some of the paint left on it get it nice and fair and put another coat on tomorrow and with the right thinner and see how it goes so an update on today we got up at five o'clock Troy got up earlier we drove down to the boat at 5 30 and we're sanding all the paint back that we put on yesterday um and we've done what's the time now I think it's 7.30 and we've done one side, we've done the port side and so we're moving on to the starboard side now and I'm just hand sanding and getting all of the high spots that we can't get with the machine but Troy's almost finished the other side with the machine now which is pretty amazing, pretty stoked and um, yeah it's a new day and we've got the new thinner and hopefully we get another coat on this afternoon or fresh coat on this afternoon and we have a much better result it just I mean people at the yard have just been saying it doesn't matter just leave it or but I don't think they really understand how much work we put in and to get a really bad result and to get a really horrible orange peel finish it just doesn't seem right for all the work that we put in so we're gonna go again and <laughs> fingers crossed this time it's it's good well we've had to start our day with a bit of sanding I didn't really want to talk to the camera yesterday because I was, I was pretty peed off. We got the wrong thinner. In fact, the, the thinner was like a, an accelerant. <laughs> a nice man at the paint shop, he sort of just said that he hadn't read the data sheet so he didn't know anything about that. So we got the right thinner and it was particularly annoying, not necessarily to heap blame upon a shop attendant, but I always harp on about reading the, the material data sheet. So, you know, instead of uh, thinner number 19, uh, thinner number 18 we bought Thin, thinner number 19 or well, that's what we were that's what we were given I should have known <laughs> that one digit you know um, but all right we've got the right thinner now so what we're going to do is we didn't have to take off all the paint we just had to take off the high spots because what it meant with the incorrect thinner is that it didn't pull down and flatten down so when you're rolling and tipping we had to go quite fast and by the time we were finished I was looking at it, I was like oh it's it's tacked a bit and then we came back in the afternoon and it didn't pull down at all so we've taken off the high spots, but what, it, what remains there is still works as a first coat. So now we're going to mix up the thinner properly and, and I'll just take a bit of time with a brush and on a flat surface and as we mix the thinner we'll just make sure those brush strokes disappear before we commit to it. Because the, the potted paint, once it's mixed, will last about eight hours. But 
We're not pain experts, you know, we're still in the learning process. I guess after this we might be a little bit closer to being good at it. Bubbles aren't straight away. Yeah, that's pulling flatter. Are you happier than before? Well, it looks way better than yesterday's job. But it's still hard, like you can see dimpling and there's a few bits where the brush tacked off and the paint dried really quickly where we're in the sun. So I didn't get a chance to tip it properly. But we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand back those bits tomorrow once it's cured, the paint's a bit set a bit more. And then we'll put another coat on. If I don't wear glasses, it looks amazing. <laughs> That's the trick, just don't wear your glasses. So when we were actually rolling and tipping, things were going pretty well, but I, I just thought we could work better together. Um, so we had a romantic night in. <laughs> yeah, we actually had rain after that second coat of paint. So we had to wait a couple of days before, before we could put more paint on. Yeah, and I figured um, because we make videos for YouTube, I thought, why don't we just look on YouTube and just see if there's someone that does know what they're doing about roll and tipping, like they've done it a lot. Because we, we were getting better, but we could still see some gaps. So I found a video called like, um, tips from an old ship, right? Yeah. And we can put the link there because when we sat down together, we, we reviewed it together and we talked about it, it really got us on the same page as to what needs to happen when, when we roll and tip. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, admittedly, that guy was using single part paint, which is a lot easier to use than the two part Jotun. But I think that just reviewing that video, um, and, and we're not linked with that guy, but we'll, we'll put it there because we think it's a good video. Yeah. People are interested in roll and tipping. Yeah. And it's funny too. It's, it's I fun love that to guy's watch. accent. Yeah. <laughs> Paint's got a habit of going off. Oh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you can check that video out if you if you want more. Um, but I, I think it really came together, and the, the, co the I think the process got better. Um, As we went along. There was no flipping out. Yeah. <laughs> so I managed to keep my promise. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I think it was, I think it really went successfully. Yeah, it did. So our third round, but first proper coat. Looks really nice. I mean, there's a few little mistakes where we didn't quite get it perfect, but even the spots where I accidentally tipped um, a bit of dry paint into the boat, they've actually flattened out, which is really awesome. We don't have any 400 grit sandpaper. I'm, I'm just touching up a few little blemishes as we go. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that finish, it's smooth. It's nice and quiet, no one's making dust, so I, I want to get yeah. this done, wipe down, and get into it. Pro's going around with sandpaper, I'm going around with this, what's this called? Abrasive pad. It's like a... Really fine, no. Really fine scotch bright pad. There's a bit of dust and there's a tiny little bit of fluff that came off the roller because we didn't wash the roller and dry them. But this time today, Troy washed them when he got home and dried them overnight, so we've got... Fingers crossed we've got lint-free rollers. It's pretty good. There's no fluff on it. Oh, one bit. Oh, there's a bit. So what we did find, it was very successful and it was a technique I kept going with, was to actually start about a roller width um, away from the last wet edge and work my way back. And I was also able to take out a lot of the bubbles with the roller. So when Pasky came to, to tip it out, she didn't have a great, um, you know, like a really big job to do. Some of our earlier failures, um, I, was, I was inclined to blame Pasky for not tipping properly, but really I was, I was doing a pretty crappy job with that roller. Yeah, I think um, once you started putting a little bit more pressure on the roller, 
and so there wasn't the paint wasn't as thick like we were actually putting on the paint too thick the yeah. first two times that's why we got the dimpling so the correct amount of thinners in there was was really key and then also making sure that the roller wasn't too loaded and then things just like just sped along they really came together So early in the early in the piece, Pasky, you were having issues, um, you know, with too much paint on your brush as well, and that was causing issues. So what did you do to deal with that? Yeah, too much paint, and also the paint actually drying on the brush as well. So when I went to tip off the bubbles, because when you're tipping, you're essentially just popping the bubbles. That's all you're doing. You're not flattening the paint or anything like that. You're just popping bubbles. So I was using um, a cloth in my pocket there. Um, and it had acetone, like had thinners in it. Um, and every now and again, I'd actually have to re-wet that cloth so that the, because the thinners um, evaporate, they dissolve. Thinners have a habit of disintegrating. That's right. <laughs> When we actually got to the transom, that was probably the most challenging because it had a lot of different surfaces, curves and everything like that. Um, and we, we, we also didn't want to make uh, an obvious transition, like uh, right on that edge. Mm. But, you know, I think we managed to get there, but of all the boat, I think the, the least good job we did was actually the on the transom. It actually probably would have been better um, for the transom to have switched to a smaller roller. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like in hindsight now looking back, but. We did Don't everything. Know. We did everything subsequent to this with a hundred millimeter roller when we yeah. did the whole, which um, you'll see the whole deck in, later on in the video. retreated into the boat because it's blowing quite quite strong out there 30 or 40 knots but it's a no rain day today and I've just finished sanding and wiping down the old antifell off the hull we did the big sand but I just did a final little touch up for all the spots that we couldn't get to Troy's mixing the antifell paint and we're going to put the antifell at least the first coat on today that's going to feel good the hull is going to look so much nicer so I'm going to hop down and we won't have any audio while we're while we're painting, I guess we'll just do a time lapse of us painting the antifell on because it's really windy out there. <sighs> it's always funny how people show up when you're in the middle of doing a paint job. <laughs> One of the secrets I've found to getting some attention is to either mix up a two-part fast cure epoxy or start painting. So apologies to anyone that came to visit us and found us a little short at the paint yard, but time really was money. So here I've just removed the end of the short roller and just putting that anti-fail up inside the sea cop. So That's definitely the last job, isn't it? Because it makes a hell of a mess of your gloves. It does. <laughs> So you can see that that paint job um, on the top sides, it came up pretty well. Like that's a fairly good reflection, but even still um, in real life, that is a, a satin finish and it did hide a lot of the lumps and bumps that we just couldn't get around to sorting out. So today's been a pretty good day. We put antifoul on this morning. We went and saw Russ and at Storm Bay Sales and he is 
putting together our new sales for us. We'll be telling you about that, all about that in a future episode, but Morel's getting a new set of sails. Um, we've been up on deck, just sanding and fairing the very last of the deck, ready for us to put high build paint on. But anyway, it's five o'clock and the great thing about working at the end of spring, start of summer, is that the daylight hours are really, really long. And it's five o'clock now, everyone's pretty much gone home. But we put the antifoul paint on at about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock this morning and so the 8 hours wait time has expired and we can be ready for a recoat. So we've had 8 hours ha have passed because um, you have to wait between coats with Jot and Sea Guardian which is what we're putting on the antifoul. So we're going to put Marul's second coat on. Now with the rest of the boat done, um, we were working we were working upwards. So the next step was to put a high build primer on. So that's a two part epoxy, and it, it basically it fills in some of the small scratches and, and pits of the repairs that we made to the hull, but it also prepares the deck to accept the top coat. So um, you know it's a pretty important step. We already had the mast and some of the rigging in place and in an ideal world that wouldn't have happened. It's just that there was real limitations on crane avail availability um, and so that meant that we had to work around an existing rig. Um, in a perfect world you would just have a completely bare boat but it's not a perfect world. <laughs> Even despite Tasmania being very beautiful. <laughs> yep. And the high build um, primer that we used was I forgot what it's called. Penguard 2B. Something. Pen, Penguard HB, which is high build. So it's a type of uh, it's a two, type of two-part epoxy, uh, quite quite quick curing um, with lots of solids in there. It's made to it's made to be easily sandable afterwards. So you yeah. sand it afterwards with about 320 grit, and, and then you paint your top coat on. So it was a really great feeling to actually get that Jotun hardtop up on the top of the boat. You know, we were really getting close to um, finishing finishing that part of things. By this stage, with um, with a lot of the tight confines, um, we'd sort of swapped over to the 100 mil rollers. And for a 30 footer, I think that just about all painting could be done with a 100 mil roller. Like in um, in hindsight, if we were going to be doing it again, I wouldn't bother with the, the 180 and 230. Yeah, millimeter rollers. Definitely for maneuvering around the boat with a paint tray, it's just way easier, isn't it? It's just especially because yep. it can be very windy. Yeah. In the end, we um, we gave away with actual um, the tipping with a brush. I found with those little mohair rollers on a hundred, hundred, hundred ten, hundred mil roller, yep. I was able to I was able to tip really effectively. Um, and get rid of any bubbles just purely with the roller itself. So that left Pasky just to cut in ahead of me places where the roller couldn't get to. Mm. Um, and yeah, it really came along fast. Yeah, yeah. And it was good, we we did it, we were able to do it in sort of sections instead of having to race like we did with the hull. Yeah, that's right. We were able to keep a, we were able to hide where there was like a break in the wet edge because it's all made of panels. 
Some people ask us um, often like why we've done some things in you know, this way or another fashion. But in a, when you're doing a refit in a very, very small town with a small population and poor weather, a lot of it you have to just sort of get around and adjust your logistics to what is possible. You know, you can't just nip down to the store and buy this, that or the other thing. Like it's a, it's a drive. You know, That's right. It's a major centre to buy anything. That's um, why it was really upsetting when we didn't have the right thinners because we basically <laughs> wasted like a whole day having to go and get more thinners and then we wasted another whole day sanding it back. Yeah, so... Um, so yeah, if you've had questions about why we've done things in a certain fashion, that's why. We just had the weather to deal with, um, not a remote area, but a small town, and yeah. The transom cap, it didn't get a coat of white, did it Pasky? No, we painted it with uh, a small tin of two-pack Jotun Hardtop Ultra Black. Yeah, um, our, and we, the reason we did that, we think it just blends in really well with our HDPE um, tow rail covers. Yes, so if you have a look into the future, you'll see it blending in now. Yeah, and we've adopted that colour scheme, black and white, for most things, just with um, blue canvas. Last coat of Antifowl today, and it seems to be the theme of the boatyard today. Everyone's prepping their, their bums for Antifowl. Troy's already started, so I better get to it. So we got not one, not two, not three. Four. Four coats of anti foul. Look at that line. You just need to metho a couple? Uh huh. Oh, or just. Or not? It's not paint. It's dust. Good taping, Troy. Well, that's a wrap. Well, it's not. It's a paint job. It's Pascal. a paint job. That's yeah. a dad joke, isn't it? Yeah, that's. <laughs> but, a uh, anyway, look. Thanks for joining us this week. Hopefully, you got something out of it. Maybe what you got out of it is that you want to have a crack at it. Maybe what you got out of it is that you just want to leave this to the professionals, and it seems like a massive headache. Mm, yeah, it was. And it could be quite stressful at the start and frustrating and. It was really nice once we came over that hurdle and we knew what we were doing a bit better and that was when it became really rewarding for us, like really acquiring that skill. But yeah, we've got that skill. It's something challenging that's, it's always worth doing that, isn't it? It's like, it's a, it's a lot more satisfying to do hard things. Mm. You know? It's satisfying to get a beer out of the fridge, but you don't feel like you've achieved much. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, enough, enough rambling. Um, we are that much closer to setting sail. Um, and I cannot wait and I know that you can't wait so yeah and thank you all for your wonderful support out there and um, we'll see you next week